She's on a work program. Work program? Sorry. If she works out well, her sentence is reduced and she's put on permanent parole. Much will depend on my report. What was her, uh, crime? I don't recall exactly. Some unpleasantness with a hatchet, I believe. Hatchet? Rita, compose yourself. There'll be quite enough melodrama once my guests arrive. Let me see. Chandler Marlowe. Now there's a man to reckon with. Seedy, down and out, but intelligent in a brutish sort of way. A true male chauvinist. I wish I had known about Habersham before I took this job. She doesn't like me, you know. And Rick and Mara Carlyle. What a witty couple. So sophisticated, so urbane. I'll enjoy their company. Unpleasantness with a hatchet could mean almost anything. What if we have another storm like the one we had last week? We were cut off for two days. We are well stocked with foodstuffs. No worry. Haversham. I recall the name. It was a famous case. I must say I had second thoughts about inviting Charity Hayes. A bit too much like James Bond for my taste. Still, a superb bridge player. All in all, a delightful menage. Come along, she's waiting. Lucky you got a cross for the star. You've arrived. Excellent. Ah, oh, you must be Miss Maple. Delighted, delighted. <laughs> I'm not Miss Maple. Huh? I am Miss Maple. I know you anywhere. Delighted, delighted. You must be Father White. How did you guess? Hardly a guess. You're clerical caller. Tisk tisk. First rule of psychological detection. Disregard the obvious. Concentrate on the possible. I might be Louis Fan in disguise. Touche. You're a master. My social secretary and companion, Miss Islesbarrow. How do you do, my dear? Welcome to Turkey Island. To the best of knowledge, only one other island in history has been called Turkey. A battle was fought there in the Aegean Sea, 4th century BC, Spartans versus the Maltese. I don't think there was any connection. This island used to be a turkey farm. Oh. Please be seated. Sherry and warm biscuits shortly. Why, thank you. No! I wonder who this could be. Take a look at this thin nose, sister. These gray eyes. This jaw is stone. It ain't Charity Hayes. <laughs> no, it ain't. Oh, Mr. Marlowe, you're a wonder. Your dialogue is infectious. I know. <laughs> My social secretary and companion, Miss Islesbarrow. How do, sister? Welcome to Turkey Island. Please be seated. Sherry and warm biscuits shortly. Unmistakably, Mr. Fan. First rule of our East detection. Disregard the obvious. I might be Laura Carlyle in drag. My social secretary and companion, Miss Islesbarrow. Uh, no deed. Overheard on the balcony. Welcome to Turkey Island. Most unusual portrait. <laughs> Oh, delighted you can accept my invitation. I'd know you anywhere. Rick and Laura Carlyle. Not necessarily. Take a bit of cook and help what you're expecting. We're going to have such fun. And you've brought your little dog. We couldn't take along our real Bow Wow. I get seasick. I said to Laura, who's going to know it's freaking Laura without their dog Napoleon? Almost anyone. Uh, do make yourselves comfortable. Sherry and warm biscuits shortly. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Flimsy. Delighted to have you on Turkey Island. Well, I could hardly resist a weekend at any establishment with the name of Ravenswood Manor. It conjures up pictures of the English moors. Dark, brooding, mysterious. Splendid. You talk the way you write. My spinal fluid has turned to frost. <laughs> He's a continental gentleman. Oh, one of a vanishing breed, Rick. Don't look too sanitary to me. Slobbering all over the dame's knuckles. Oh, I detect the dubious charm of Chandler Marlowe. Fucking here, flimsy. 
Are we all here? I believe so. No, Miss Maple, there's one more. One more? Charity Hayes. Oh, silly of me, I forgot. Don't keep us waiting, Miss Hayes. Come in. Come in, Charity. Charity Hayes is some woman. Come on in, baby. I don't think my sniffles is clearing up, Miss Maple. I think I'm coming down with something. Where is Charity Hayes? Who? The other lady on the boat. What's in this room is it. She wasn't with us on the boat. We assumed she arrived earlier. I've never had an invitation of mine ignored. Maybe she'll come on the other boat. If the storm doesn't blow up. Go along, Habersham. Fetch refreshments. Yes, ma'am. I wonder who does her dresses. I just thought we'd snack until dinner time. I do hope you all like blue cheese fondue. I'll see that everything's prepared upstairs. Thank you, Rita. Interesting woman, that Miss Asbury. Has she been with you long? Barely a month, why do you ask? But the moment is right, I shall harvest my deductions. There's no need to act so mysterious, Mr. Chan. I mean, fan. So we're just gonna sit around here and chew the fat? Oh, it's either that or blue cheese fondue. Well, let's chew the fat. Please, please, dear guests, we mustn't get off this subject. There are ground rules. I am concerned about the storm. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. What was that? I'll handle it. Miss Maple, Miss Maple, Miss Maple! What's wrong with the young woman? Miss Maple, Miss Maple, Miss Maple! She got a promise she advertised her pancakes, sir. Miss Maple, Miss Maple, Miss Maple! Habersham, get a hold of yourself. Why, she's hysterical. I don't see anything amusing in her condition. Habersham, take a deep breath. Couldn't tell us from our literary counterparts? No, that's what makes it all so charming. However, I insist that you keep up the little game at all times. I forbid you to use your real names. <laughs> I'll be watching and I'll be listening. If the weekend turns out the way I trust it will, you will all receive wonderful news. News that will benefit you financially. I trust you're all willing to play along? Oh, yes. Well, sounds like yeah. it. I'm with you, sister, all the way. Chandler, you're a fair cousin. A figure of speech, Chandler. Dreadful syntax, but colorful. Typical of the amusing Louis fan. Uh, may I ask something? Be my guest, sister. Why are we all talking like this? Miss Maple is out of the room. How do you mean? We can relax, talk normally. Be ourselves? I am talking normally. This is the way I always talk. Quite. I wear this collar, but my speech is my own. 
mad to lose his identity, tell to fight himself. Whatever that means. <laughs> Laura and I aren't any different than we are here, than we are at home in our fashionably starry Manhattan apartment. Right, Napoleon? <laughs> Miss Maple is a most enterprising woman. She's also, as the vulgarism goes, filthy rich. If she wants another to up on a famous parties list, I'll volunteer mine. I'll enjoy humoring her. More generally. Oh, you kidding, flimsy! Sure, the old Maple Dame is famous for a weekend party. The way I hear it, she's gonna open up a chain of bookstores. Bookstores? Detective bookstores. Detective, Detective bookstores. Of course, uh, none of you knew about that, did you? We're all here for the same reason. It ain't the sample no blue cheese fondue. Forget the fondue. That won't be easy. In other words, you believe we're all here to win Miss Maple's favor, thus ensuring our detective novels a place on the shelves, as it were. It's the name of the game. Well, what of it? I don't imagine the Sheridan Hayes books are going to be on Miss Maple's shelves. Business is business. And if Miss Maple wants to play games before placing an order with the publishers, I say, why not? We're wrong, though. I suppose you would be glad about that. Most of your stuff is out of print. If you weren't a man of the cloth, I'd have a few choice words for you. Ben's books aren't doing any better. I heard even the Nostalgia Book Club turned him down. Beware the dragon's wrath. The only thing dragging about you is your book sales. This is no way to start the weekend. This should be a light and happy occasion. How about some music? A good idea, I'll get something. I hope the static won't be too heavy. The storm could cause interference. this program of light chamber music to bring you a special bulletin. A dangerous murderer has escaped from the Marin County Institute for the Similarly Insane. Not only as a pair of 30 faces, the prisoner sees a rowboat at dawn and was last seen heading into a fog on the coast to Turkey Island. And now back to box Brandenburg in the episode. What about the mysterious face the maid saw at the window? Holy faces, that's our master of disguise. Sherry and warm biscuits. My congratulations, Miss Maple. What are you talking about? Oh. The classic touch. I've used it several times in my own novels. <coughs> Lonely house on an isolated island, and then radio or television flash, mad killer on the prowl. You're all too clever for me. <laughs> but I did think it was amusing. Oh, 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 too kind, too kind. Habersham, serve the sherry. Yes, ma'am. Let's hear it again. By all means, it was most amusing. Couldn't have done better myself. Witty, that's what it was, Miss Maple. Uh, here goes. I too. Oh dear, that's not it. I too. Step back from the console. I don't understand. San Lomaro. Me? San Lomaro, I accuse you of a foul crime. You cannot escape your past. Foul crime? It's a gag. That's all. Right, sister? We fans. Remember that night in Shanghai? I accuse you of treachery. I have never visited a lost city of Shanghai. Rick and Laura Carlisle, what does the name Tulip mean to you both? I accuse you of unforgivable deceit. Tulip? Tulip? I think I recognize that voice. Father White, why are you really here at Ravenwood Manor? I was invited. I accuse you of sinister motives 
and shaming your calling. It would seem you've all been up to a bit of mischief. Peter Flimsy, what actually happened on the cricket field at Eton? Eton? Why, I haven't been there in years. I accuse you of dishonor. Charity Hayes, I accuse you of murder. Murder? Uh, I don't know anything about murder. What are y'all looking at me for? I'm not Charity Hayes. You have heard the accusation. You cannot escape. You will be punished. It's a gag. Gag, I tell you. Miss Maple? Yes? What is the real secret of Ravenswood Manor? That is all. I can't get you, David. It's all static. Um, uh, you, you've outdone yourself. Very, uh, original. <laughs> uh, effective, uh, theatrical, once again, classic. I myself used the technique in my bestseller. Prime in Coffin Corner. Ah, oh, I used it in Murder at the Masquerade. Respectful submit my title. Several lines in several popular magazines. Drive is a puzzlement. Don't forget, I use the gimmick in Murder Mops Up. Laura and I employed the accusing record floor, ploy in our sophisticated and clever Manhattan murders. I think I'd like to go to my room now. Oh, this sounds sensible. <laughs> Could do with the slap of aftershave. Point the way, sister. Are you talking to me? Oh, of course you are. I forgot our charade for a moment. Through the hall up the stairs, you'll find your name and your door. Uh, don't forget your luggage. Thank you, Haversham. Everybody have theirs? Yes, thank you. Most delightful interview, honorable hostel. Thank you, Mr. Moto. Bear. Fan? His name is Mr. Fan. You said Moto. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, may I present a question? Uh, please do. Very portrait. Honorable Ed Sister? Yes, my father. His name, please? His name? Mr. Maple. Oh. Most compelling face, your father. Please to be excused. What about these biscuits? They'll get stale. Who put on this tape? I thought you did. My tape was the first tape. They were scared, your guests. Oh, you noticed that too? They tried to cover up, but I know a roof full of scared pigeons when I see them. Dear. We're in for a bad time with the storm, I'm afraid. The lights might go. Why isn't Rita here when I need her? I'm right here, Miss Maple. Rita, why didn't you tell me about this tape? The one you put in the machine? No, the one accusing my guests of foul crime. I don't know anything about it. Why do you carry that hat box, Rita? What's in the hat box? Nothing. Then why carry it? I'd better go check on the supplies the motorboat brought over on the dock. <sighs> She's acting strangely. Weird customer, Miss Maple. She put on the other tape out there. I'd keep an eye on her if I was you. Well, you're not me. Come along to the kitchen. We must check on the fondue. Yes, ma'am. Someone say something about biscuits and sherry. Anyone? Anyone about? Uh, Mr. Carlyle. I didn't know you were downstairs. I thought you were with the others. Came down a moment ago. You've been outside. I was going to the dock, but it's starting to rain heavily and the wind is up. What's in the hat box? What would you expect to find in a hat box? Sir? Strange lady.
I've been poisoned! I'm dying! 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 Dead! Oh my god! Oh my goodness! Where was it coming from? Oh, it did sound like Rick! Well, what do you suppose he could have been yelling about? It sounded as if he were in pain. Maybe he got to the farm, though. Most curious. Uh, what is? What glass with sherry missing? What biscuit gone? Well, what's on it? We heard a scream uh, all the way to the kitchen. Perhaps you could enlighten us, Miss Webber. Oh, but about what? Missing glass with sherry and absent biscuit. Who's he? Louis Fan, a well-known Oriental detective. Not him. Him. Oh it's madness. It can't be. Laura, don't look. Oh, whatever you think best. Is he dead? Dead. Oh. How dead? How dead can you get? The voice on the radio. It said we'd be punished. I think I understand. Most classic. As each one of us is punished, a figurine will fall from the mantle. Died in this room, died on the mantle. Three. Explain, please. There aren't nine figurines on the mantle. There are only three. Only three? Must readjust deduction. Never mind about that. We've got a dead man here. This isn't turning out how I planned. Chandler, what does it all mean? Mean? It means murder, Miss Maple. Murder? Murder. On Turkey Island. This is no time to be walking about outside. You'll catch something. The only thing I want to catch is a killer. You're quite sure the poor fellow is dead? Killer? I mean Rick. Flimsy me stretched him out on a table in the wine cellar. He's still there. The dead don't walk. Tisk tisk. I fear Miss Maple's little charade has taken a nasty turn. Never saw a murder that wasn't nasty. Nasty murders are my business. You're used to crime in the streets. The streets are my beat. Fancy dumps like Ravenswood Manor. Too rich for my blood. Am I intruding? No, no, my dear. Do join us. Uh, don't get up. Did you get any sleep, baby? Dropped off the minute in my head at the pillow. Grief does that. Uh, Chandler, you're all wet. The dark's almost gone. If that boat gets here before morning, my name ain't Chandler Marlow. Well, your name isn't Chandler Marlow. I mean, really. You're a stickler for details, Padre. I suppose you're all wondering why I've taken Rick's demise so lightly. Uh, he ain't exactly used up a box of Kleenex with the waterworks. Truth of the matter is, Rick and I have been estranged for some time. Would you like to hear about it? 
Not really, Laura, my dear. Domestic troubles are quite beyond my comprehension. Man of the cloth and all that. Personal things should be kept personal. I ought to know. I've looked through enough keyholes. If you insist. He was interested in another woman. Or, perhaps more correctly, another woman was interested in him. Dames will get you every time. Do you know the creature? <laughs> Rick, or the other woman? The other woman. In a way. I had a private investigator investigate her. What sort of person was she? Fascinating, but unscrupulous. Her name was Mabel Dupre. What's her name now? What? You said her name was Mabel Dupre. So what is it now? That's a stupid question, Chandler. Let's hear a stupid answer. A leopard doesn't change its spots. I suppose her name is still Mabel Dupre. <sighs> what the private investigator find out? Almost nothing. She moves around a lot, never stays long in one place. However, he did find out one thing of interest. Oh? She had a violent temper. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of woman. I can well understand the attraction. Mabel Dupre, the flame, Rick Carlisle, the moth. Except he got burned. Bad. I love that man of mine. He'd be by my side today if it weren't for that vampire. Speaking of vampires, Miss Mabel's library has quite a fine collection of Victorian novels. Some are quite ghoulish. Not my type of stuff at all. I cover the paper. Do you think she was mixed up in your husband's demise? Uh, Miss Mabel? Miss Dupre. A woman like that is capable of anything. Certain you two never crossed paths? Never set eyes on her. However, I did hear her voice. When? Where? In my contemporary Manhattan apartment, weeks ago, before the invitation arrived. The phone rang. I answered. The operator said, person to person call from Mabel Dupre to Rick Carlisle. Then I heard her voice. What did she say? She said, hello. What did you say? I said, if you know what's good for me, you'll never try and contact my husband again, or else. Or else what? <laughs> I'd rather not say. This is all so distressing. Fun and games are one thing, but murder is quite another. Amen, sister. There ain't no parlor game. Chandler, you're all wet. I've been outside. Obviously. What am I going to do? No phone anywhere in the house? None. No wireless or citizens band either. It's a cinch no boat's gonna get hit till morning. What about poor Rick? He ain't going nowhere. <sighs> Thought you were supposed to be helping me outside. For all we know, the killer could still be out there prowling around looking for another target. You mean he may strike again? He? Or she? <sighs> the female is the deadly species. Chandler, you're all... Don't say it. Don't say it. Give you a knuckle sandwich. Your sort would resort to brute force. It's been the secret of my success. If root source for all, tiger would not fear scorpion. There you go with the bugs again. Mr. Moto, have you discovered anything that might shed light on this terrible affair here at Ravenswood Manor? Please do enter. You have discovered something. Please be seated, Miss Maple. Shall now the murderer of what semi famous Rick Carlisle. Oh. Oh. Patience, all will be revealed. I have a strong feeling, Mr. Wong, that the murderer's name will begin with the letter M. Fan. What? His name is Mr. Fan. You said Wong. I didn't say he was wrong. I said the murderer's name will begin with the letter M. Not wrong. Wong. <sighs> this is getting us nowhere. I do hope this suspense will last. <laughs> the guy we need here is Beryl Link. 
Who? Top police detective on the Frisco Force. Uh, I'm not unfamiliar with his name, but since he doesn't write detective fiction, he was not on my list of invitees. What's all this business about the letter M? Deceased was mixed up with another doll. Mabel Dupre. Please, no, nothing about letter M. It comes right after L. <sighs> Sorry. Why would this Dupre woman want to murder Mr. Carlyle? I know her sort. Fascinating, unscrupulous, dangerous. A woman like that would stop at nothing. What's her motive? Obvious. Rick preferred me and told her so. Mabel Dupre vowed vengeance. Ah, proof? No proof. Women's intuition. Intuition ain't no substitute for logic. Must get Choo Choo back on Jack. The clue is in the recording. Killer knew each of us intimately. You mean the accusations. I have no idea what you're talking about. I am only here because I was invited. Shallow de murderer. You. 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 Oh. You. 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 You are the murderer. Miss Maple's father? Correction, please. That is. Portrait of famed historian Ludwig Flush. Why would Ludwig Flush want to do us any harm? Early in his career, Ludwig Flush published detective novels under the pen name of Antonia Cheddar. Failed miserably, turned psychotic, and devoted life to subject of ancient history. You mean his sense of frustration is so fierce, he'd actually punish successful detective writers? Heard of where the customers? Where is he now? In house. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Wood. I know. He must have been the face at the window. Could be. Not possible. Why not? Ludwig Flush confined to wheelchair due to advancing age. Nice theory, but it won't hold water. Like his coat I'm wearing. Stamp on a lunch counter rag. Have proof. What kind of proof, I wonder? I'm afraid Mr. Wong gets carried away. He does that in his writings, too. Never could make any sense out of his nonsense. One finds more clarity in our fortune cookie. <laughs> Behold, incriminating evidence. A wheelchair? I don't see what that proves. Miss Maple, why did you lie? Why did you say bad and portrait was dishonorable, father? I had no idea it would come to this. You mean Ludwig Flush is your father? I don't mean anything of the sort. I don't know any deranged person by the name of Ludwig Flush. But portrait! If you must know, there's a hole in that fireplace wall. The portrait fit perfectly, so I'm using it for covering. But where did you get the portrait? Where do I get all my interesting pieces? At a garage sale! Garage sale? Your entire line of reasoning is absurd. But wheelchair! Maybe this will help. What's written here? What's it say, kid? Property of United States Coast Guard. Coast Guard? If found, please contact nearest Federal Lighthouse Station. If it doesn't belong to Ludwig Flush, how did it get here? All sorts of flotsam and jetsam washes up on the beach. It's kept in the cellar, but apparently Mr. Fan felt the wheelchair should be brought upstairs to aid in his ridiculous theory. Uh, must be a just deduction. Most unique guess. Havisham, get that out of here. Yes, ma'am. I'm afraid one of the upstairs windows will blow open. Damage could be done to the expense of Oriental. Expensive? You could pick up a Louis fan paper back for two bits. I meant the Oriental carpet. It's rare. So are you, baby. <laughs> go along, go along, and take your hat box with you. You're always leaving it about. Yes, ma'am. I trust we all realize that we could have been wiped out. You mean if we ate the biscuits? 
If the poison was in the biscuits? Give you three to one on that cherry. Stuff will kill you if it had been poisoned. Do we fully grasp the seriousness of this situation? Cut off from the mainland. The storm. No communication. A face at the window, walking around. I think it would be wise if none of us ate or drank anything until morning. Until morning? Or until the storm ebbs, and we can signal a passing boat. If still alive. The poison was neither in the sherry nor the pastry. We all saw the half-bitten biscuit and empty glass of sherry. Stand up, if you would, Mrs. Carlyle. Ah, a touch of the master himself. Sherlock Holmes. Well, magnifying glasses have become quite sophisticated since the days of London fog and handsome cabs. This one, for instance, magnifies 20 times. It also identifies odors. Amazing. It is a capital mistake to theorize before one has all the evidence. We must never be taken in by appearances. So? Well, if you look here, you'll see what I mean. Um, there's the spot. See it. Why, it looks like a little needle. Precisely. Give me a look. Rick Carlyle was murdered by a poison dot. Dart? Yes. I discovered the dot about an hour ago. Since it entered the body at an almost straight angle, I surmised it came from the portrait. Or rather, as Miss Maple has explained, the hole in the wall. You're right. What are eyeballs missing? We're up against a clever killer. Either clever or mad. What if some lunatic got wind of this weekend party and decided to have a murderous lark? You're allowing your imagination to run away with you, my dear. Am I? Do you realize I was sitting in that chair? Good heavens, you might have been scratched. Mind explaining yourself out of that one, flimsy? I removed the vicious little dot, analyzed the poison, and returned the miniature weapon for the purpose of recreating the murder method. Without the poison, it's harmless. Give you credit, flimsy. You're no man's fool. Well, I, I appreciate that, Chandler. Still think we ought to case the island. I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, I'm terrified. What man could have done such a thing? Aren't you forgetting something, Miss Maple? What? Poison is a woman's weapon. Come on, before he gets away. I should check on things in the kitchen, but I'm frightened of every shadow. Would allow by humble protection. Thank you, Dan. I'd appreciate Dan, that. Dan, the name is Fred, not Dan. Well, what's the use? I think it would be wise if we stuck together. You mean safety in numbers. Precisely. I don't see how that's going to protect us from flying darts coated in poison. Still, we must admit, the killer is one of imagination. No pistol shots for this chap. Uh, then you are convinced the killer is a male. A world male, perhaps. Time will tell. If your theory is correct, then you could be the killer. My dear, dear Laura, you're distraught. Or, or Peter Flimsy, or Chandler Marlowe, or Lily. Laura, control Let's yourself. Stay away from me. Thing I want. At least when I'm awake, I know I'm alive. Poor Miss Maple. She was so counting on a fun weekend. It's a raging success, if you have a macabre sense of humor. I want to confide in someone. Uh, what about? Haversham. She's on parole. Imprisoned because of some unpleasantness with a hatchet. Haversham. Hatchet. 
I recall the case. Be on guard. Oh, I appreciate your telling me. Uh, Rita, don't forget your hat box. What's that? There's a helicopter overhead. A helicopter? Undoubtedly a police helicopter. We're saved. Saved. You ought to see this. It's over the house. You can see the lights through the rain and fall. Is it the police? Don't know, but they dropped the ladder down. A ladder? It's not swinging and glow. You mean they're dropping someone down in this weather? That would be insane. Who would be foolhardy enough to descend to house of murder? Charity hates. That's who. Charity, baby, you remember me. Chandler Marlowe. We met a Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Charity Hayes is in your ordinary face in the crowd. I don't understand. A helicopter? I missed the boat. This might be ungracious of me, but I could do with a hot bath. I'll prepare one. I'm your hostess, my dear, and this is Mr. Peter Flimsy, and this is Mr. Louis Fan, and this is Mrs. Could we hold the introductions? Till after I've had my bath. Whatever you say, Charity. Come along, I'll show you to your room. So delighted that you can attend. You live up to your reputation. Don't suppose I could get a glass of sherry and a biscuit. What a girl! Package of dynamite. Remarkable young woman. Exceptional. What's the matter with you, Laura? That voice, that voice, I'd know it anywhere. Mabel Dupre. Actually, when it was muggy and got mildew on my gum shoes. I must say, I'm terribly disappointed in Louis. All that business about Ludwig Flush and the wheelchair. Lucky for him, the hero of his books isn't as dense. Never read much of him. Not my type of stuff. Too soft for me. I like my crime hard boiled. Murder is not an egg, Chandler. Bad egg stick. So do murders. It's been a murder in this house. It stinks. I had Rita throw an embroidered bedsheet over poor Mr. Carlyle. It was the least I could do. You're a gracious doll. I can be gracious and I can be resolute. Ah, I feel like a human being, thanks to that hot tub. You look like a human being, baby. My kind of human being. Chandler tells me you met in Louisiana. At Mardi Gras. Ah, uh, how romantic. I didn't think so. The weather was muggy, and I got mildew on my platforms. Gotta admire any girl who can arrive at a weekend house party during the height of a storm in don't, a helicopter. Don't call me a girl, Chandler. I'm all woman. You can say that again. You heard me the first time. I must say, I was annoyed when you didn't arrive with the others on the boat. Then I was relieved. Relieved? Now that we're all apparent targets for some deranged killer. You mean Rick Carlisle. He's not the killer. He's the victim. What's anybody doing about it? We're doing what we can. We're not eating anything. We're not drinking anything. Mr. Fan made some preposterous deductions that did nothing but cloud the issue. 
The man is a buffoon. You all seem to be taking the murder rather calmly. Is that even going to do anything about it? I don't know. I'm not taking it calmly. I've been down the wine cellar. What? Yeah? What of it? There's a body down there. Naturally, there's a body down there. Or unnaturally, Rick Carlisle. He's dead. He won't get any deader. You don't understand. He's really dead. You meant sampling some of the wares down in that wine cellar? I thought it was all part of the game. All part of the charade. I thought he'd show up later and tell us it was all a joke. Murder is never a joke. Didn't you hear what Flimsy said? A poison dart. Murder! Sit down, Father White. You're weak in the kneecaps. I am distraught. Funny games are one thing, but... Yeah, yeah, we know. But murder's another. I like realism as well as fantasy in my charades. But I do trust you wouldn't believe I would stoop so low as murder. Uh, I don't know what to believe anymore. Can't see a thing. Fog's like black ink. Oh, 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 murder. What's the matter with him? He just figured out the corpse in the wine cellar is a corpse. Would you mind explaining that? Murder. Real murder. That's the worst kind. Incurable. Hmm. Well, it looks as if you're all gathering for a council of war. I've asked the others to join me. I do wish they'd get here. Well, the honorable hostess requests honorable guests comply. Do shut up! You know something else, Louis? I don't believe Oriental people really talk the way you do. Where is Laura? Why isn't she here? She's had a bit of a shock. A shock? Someone murdered her husband? She took that standing up. I don't mean a husband. He means you, Miss Hayes. Me? What have I got to do with Laura Carlyle? I don't know the lady. Read some of her books. Not my style at all. You're more like me, baby. Here to the city's asphalt. Leave my ear out of it. Ah, oh, there you are. Come and join us. I'll sit over here. As you wish. You got something on your mind, Miss Maple? I told you, Chandler. I can be gracious and I can be resolute. Tear the resolute. Quite. <clears throat> I wish to apologize for the strange turn of events here at Ravenswood Manor. It's not your fault. The point I wish to emphasize exactly. I do trust you wouldn't believe I would stoop so low as to engineer this misfortune. Oh, why would we even think such a thing? You mean we might suspect you are out to publicize your new chain of bookstores? What bookstores? It's no secret, is it? Isn't that why we're all here? To make sure our books are on her shelves? You go right to the heart of the matter, Charity. I see no reason to pussyfoot. So you all knew what I was planning? Well, what if we did know? No harm done, is there? Why not ask Rick? Rick who? The dead man in the cellar. As Mr. Fan would say, must get Twitchell back on track. My reputation as a hostess has been impeccable. Until now. Alas, we have no choice but to remain on the island. Is that correct or isn't it? Correct. Stuck here till daylight. <sighs> I will not have my party ruined by a murderer whose motive or motives or as yet are unrevealed. Huh? I will not bow down to any sinister force. Nothing will change. The charade will continue. <clears throat> Forgive me. I didn't mean to get carried away. Well, why continue? I want the murderer to be found so he can be punished. M murder is one thing, but the ruination of a weekend party at Ravenswood Manor is quite another. That's all well and good, Miss Maple. But we're detective writers, not the police. And the police would only bungle the case. Besides, Mr. Flimsy has already shown remarkable talent in deduction. I've been prowling around. On a scent. You have a great deal of faith in us. Who? 
I've already explained my theory. Detective story writers often create sleuths like themselves. Only more so. Exactly. I've invited you here because you're the best in your field. Prove it. Find the gatecrasher. Let his apprehension be a warning to all other social bores. I wouldn't call a murderer a social bore. Who else but a bore would do such a thing? At least if nothing else, we could get a pretty good yarn out of this. A yarn? Yeah, a book. I got a title already. Murder Walks the Fog. Island of the Evil. Mystery in San Francisco Bay. The Corpse in the Wine Cellar. Mad Weekend. The sooner the beast is caught, the sooner we can hand him over to the police with a minimum of publicity. Publicity, like dark, works both ways. Then we're agreed. We will not bow down to the intruder. The charade will continue. As you wish. However, yes. 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 To assure you that I'm not frivolous in my pursuit to catch this monster, I will award an honorarium to the one who smokes him out. How much? Twenty-five thousand dollars. Twenty-five thousand dollars. You have until sunrise. I think she means it. She means it. She won't stand for anyone disrupting her weekend house party. If I find out who did it, I won't be adverse to publicity. No, your kind never is. My kind? Why are we all standing here talking? There's the killer. She's the one. Mabel Dupre. Mabel who? Easy, baby. That ain't the Dupre dame. That's Chatty Hayes. Take my word for it. Don't let that phony wig fool you. It's Mabel, I tell you. Mabel? Mabel? Take off that wig. Ow! Ow! You home wrecker! You're crazy! That Let me handle oh, this. Oh, 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 let do something. Give me that wig. It's not a wig. Oh. It's my own head. You idiot. Thanks, Charity. I needed that. What was all that about? You'll have to forgive her, Miss Hayes. She's not herself. She mistook you for an arch rival. Infamous Mabel Dupre. You sure pack a mean wallop, sugar. I can take care of myself, Chandler. I think we're all making a great mistake. In what way? I think the clue is in the recording. If it is, there's a woman behind it. I can feel it. Here you go with that women's intuition thing again. In other words, Laura, you mean Chagé la femme. Huh? It was that famous detective, Monsieur Jacquard, in Dumas, the Mohicans of Paris, who first used the phrase. Ooh. Wearing his green spectacles and constantly dipping into his snuff box, huh? forever saying, Chagez la femme! Uh, then you agree with me. But surely you all must know that Monsieur Jacquard was the literary ancestor to all the great fads from Victor Hugo Javert Victor who? to Doyle's Holmes and years before Hawkshaw. What's a ferret? I don't know any Hawkshaw. What's he going on about? Your education in the history of detectives is sadly lacking. Interesting you use word history. The just name of gentlemen and portrait. Not big flush. I understand the recording accused me of murder. Yeah. Easily explained. How? Since I never actually murdered anyone, anyone real that is, the recording had to mean a popular character in one of my books. I remember that one. You had a character by the name of, uh, Jumbo, a great gumshoe. I got bored with him, so I knocked him off, in print. There was a public outcry. The critics said I murdered Jumbo. 
Ah, in much the same manner, Doyle created a sensation when he killed off Sherlock Holmes. Interesting, but it's not getting us anywhere. I'm not sure I can agree. Most interesting explanation suggests other possibilities. It's getting chilly. I thought someone might need a napkin. I'll put them in the bedrooms, too. We won't be doing much sleeping. Gets quite chilly on the island. It's the first time I've seen her without that hat box. Curious you should mention hat box. Recalls case of a headless horseman. I remember that one, too. A jockey was murdered by his girlfriend during a Kentucky Derby. Why do they call him the Headless Horseman? Uh, you mean... You mean... You mean... This Alspera looks a basically like missing girlfriend. A female addicted to hats. Notice similarity as soon as I entered Ravenswood Manor. I'm not worried about the missing girlfriend. I'm worried about the missing... Uh, don't say it, Laura, my dear. It's, it's too dreadful to contemplate. She could be the lunatic killer. We've got more important things to worry about. I think we should lay out a plan of action. What do you suggest? Well, Jenny and me will tackle the wine cellar. Louie, you and Father White go over the upstairs with a fine tooth comb. Fine tooth do not possess such an article. <laughs> Small joke. Even if it was a big joke, wouldn't be any funnier. Uh, what about me? I'll take Laura with me. We'll check around outside. Uh, do you think that's wise? Well, we'd better stick in pairs. I mean, going outside. The storm. Just keep thinking about that 25 grand. Let's go outside. Come along, Louie. You lead. I follow. Stay close. I am sorry about the wig. So is my scalp. Charity, charity, charity. Here we are together again. Keep your mind on your work, Chandler. Ravenswood Manor isn't Mardi Gras. Well, uh, how's about a little kiss for old time's sake? Which way to the wine cellar? Down that way. Come on, Charity. Come on, puck it up. Give us a kiss. Come on, sugar. I'm waiting. Big hug and a kiss for old time's sake. Call that a kiss? I ain't no lover girl. <laughs> You! Who'd you expect? Where's Charity? Down the hall. If she's going to the wine cellar, she won't get in. Why not? I locked it. Then you can unlock it. The key's by the door. Habersham! Habersham! Hello? Anybody about? I'll read. That'll quiet my nerves. The case of the curious caretaker. Hmm. <clears throat> I shall never forget the night I arrived at Skull Island. No one was there to greet me, with the exception of Miss Midwinter, the housekeeper, a woman of stern countenance and iron will. And I was terrified. Perhaps if the boatman had not been blind and mute, some of my fears might have been lessened. But alas, that was not to be. Why was the bell in the abandoned tower ringing, I wondered? Did it foretell some dreaded happening? It wasn't the warmest of welcomes for a governess of 16. What would I encounter here, in this strange house of ancient rocks and dark emotions? Hello? Who's there? No, wait! wait. Killer's outside, he's a fool as well as a madman. Look how sweet 
She's fallen asleep like an innocent child. Well, should we wake her? Oh, no, let her sleep. She needs all the rest she can get. What's the third reason? I forget. But it'll come to me. We've searched everywhere. Not a sign of an intruder. Maybe the others have found something outside. Not so. They're a bit upstairs. It was supposed to remain outside. The rain forced them in. What did you two discover? There's an embroidered bed sheet over the dead man. Perhaps Skiller, a gesture of contrition, placed a broidered bedsheet over the sea. An embroidered bedsheet does sound a bit extravagant. After all, a plain bedsheet would have done just as well. Suggest we consider motive behind placing of a broidered bedsheet over a cooling body of Rick Carlyle. Possibly will lead to Killer's identity. You two guys belong in a museum. The old doll had really tossed the linen over the victim. Fuck it here, sugar. One less clue to consider. Louis, I don't think you could find yourself in the dark. It ain't raining so much as before. You gotta watch that Havisham. She sneaks up on you when you ain't looking. Steals a kiss. I don't steal. I mean, I don't steal no more. I'm reformed. What are you talking about? Hello, what's the matter with her? Who? Miss Maple. Oh, bless me. I didn't even see her sitting there. She's awful still. Please don't wake her. She's exhausted. Is it any wonder? Where's Flimsy? Washing his hands. Out damn spot. Out I say. Huh. Shakespeare, Macbeth. Act five, scene one. Lady Macbeth attempts to wash away the blood of guilt. Huh? Why would man wash head when he has just entered house from storm? Uh, maybe they were dirty. She really don't look right to me. Who? Who we been talking about? Miss Maple? Nothing, I tell you. Should we wake her? Eh, let it be. All people need sleep. Any luck? No. We discovered... Exactly nothing. It's another one. Another what? Another figurine fell off the mantle. It's broken like the first one. Most unusual. Anybody got any ideas? About what? About anything. We could get up a game of bridge. Splendid idea. Outrageous! Didn't any of you realize I was murdered? We thought you were asleep. Shots rang out. I was slumped over. A figurine fell from the mantle. What's going on here? I'll tell you what's going on here. You're a bunch of incompetents. I arranged for Havisham to fire some shots to test your reactions. And alas, you've all failed miserably. You were carrying on with the charade, right? That charity is self-evident. Since everything else has proven quite absurd, I'm beginning to doubt that the gentleman in the wine cellar is truly deceased. He's deceased. Take a word for it. I shall see for myself. Get the key, Habersham. Yes, ma'am. Idiots! She's annoyed. I hope this doesn't mean she'll give up the idea of the bookstores. Maybe we should think up something to calm her down. You must be famished. There's some food that's sealed in this container. We might eat that. No one could tamper with it. I am hungry. I'll see to it at once. Uh, what woman? What is it, Mr. Tan? Not dead. 
fed. Right there is Louis fed. This is a fed. Think of fed. Who's on a hot dish? Fed. Understand? I'm not a child. You have something to say to me. It must be obvious to us all that killer is one of us. What? How can you say that? We'll explain. Do. Well, recalls case of headless horseman. If why would jockey of headless horseman uh, take job at Ravenswood Barrel? Are you talking about the horseman murdered by his girlfriend at the Kentucky Derby? I am. Believe Miss Asboro is jockey's sweetheart. That's ridiculous. Suggest also Miss Asboro was sweetheart of Rick Carlisle and that he wished to end friendship was struck down as was unfortunate jockey. You mean? That is murderer. You mean? Fascinating and unscrupulous. You mean? Mabel Dupre. What are you all staring at? You are Mabel Dupre. You murdered Rick Carlisle. I don't want another mistake. Here is photograph of unhappy jockey and his bad sweetheart. Rubbish. Note positive resemblance. Guess assault. Um, Louis. Yes? The woman in this picture is a black woman. Miss Islesborough is not a black woman. What a meatball. No wonder your books are going out of print. Let me see picture. Hmm. You are not mad, sweetheart. Maybe I'm not sweetheart, but I'm certainly mad. Furious, you fool. Unless hat box belongs to Jockey Skiller. Why are we here talking about the Kentucky Derby when Miss Maple is angry with a lot of us? Rita, forgive this. What did you call him? I called Mr. Fan a fool. Forgive this fool. Please fetch Miss Maple from the wine cellar. You ought to be locked up. You're a menace. Gotta hand it to you, Louie. You are one in a million. Two wrong deductions in one evening is quite enough. With all the heads plus, who can hear the rooster? I do agree with Louie on one thing. Oh, what's that? The killer is one of us. But why was Rick the only one to get it? Get what? The dart in that chair. Oh, I am sorry, Laura. That was tactless. No fear, though. I put a piece of metal plate behind the portrait. The passageway the deadly dart took has been sealed. I wish you quit talking like one of your characters from your stupid books. Oh, if only the Don would get here. Give it time. He's dead, quite dead. There can be no question. I think I can shed some light on this grisly affair. Pitch in. Habersham. Read what about her? What I told you was to be kept in confidence. I don't think we have any right to keep it a secret any longer. You mean about Habersham's police record? How did you know? I told Mrs. Carlyle. Habersham is not homicidal. What about the unpleasantness with a hatchet? Hatchet? Aha, we are back to the hat box. Nothing of the sort. Habersham, hatchet, I recall the case. Didn't she try to break into some safety deposit boxes by chopping through the bank's outside wall? She made some such attempt. But I didn't get away with it, and I've done my time. I'd appreciate it, too, if you talked about me when I was in the room. It's only polite. Murder and politeness seldom go together. Will this cursed storm never end? I can see where this is going to take a strong, logical hand. I think I can shed some light, too. Please do. We're all agreed that the murderer 
used the recording to lay out his plan. Ah, Carlyle's demise was proof. Proof of nothing, except that he was marked for death. Remember what I was accused of. Murder. Murder only in the figurative sense. How about it, Louis? How about that night in Shanghai? Uh, no, nothing. Remember the stakes. Survival. I'm thinking of something sinister. What? There's only one figurine left on the mantle. If the killer's going to strike again, he'll have to do it before daylight. I hope no one will say, no one leave the room. Uh, Lights in Shanghai does not refer to holiday and audience. The rival writer was to use it for his new book. I used it first. He never forgave me. My murder wasn't real. Night in Shanghai was merely a book title. What about you, Mrs. Carlyle? Me? What does tulip signify? Tulip was a dog, the sweetest little puppy you ever saw. I wanted to buy him, but the pet shop owner refused. He was adamant. He was going to sell him to a harsh and disagreeable army major. Rick and I couldn't bear it. So we Dog nappers. We changed Tulip's name to Napoleon so no one would know. We were always afraid. How would it look on the society page? What dark secret was yours, Chandler? The recording said you couldn't escape your past, that you were guilty of a foul crime. Well, I have to. Chandler! All right. Before I became a detective writer, I had another job. I was, uh, you what? I was a literary critic. Critic? critic. That is foul. Well, there's no sense asking me what happened on the playing fields of Eton. I haven't the slightest idea. Don't you see? The recording was a joke. The crimes weren't crimes at all. Indiscretions, perhaps. Nothing more. So as I was playing jokes here and there, someone else was doing the same thing with the recording. That's my guess. I can buy it. But who did it? We don't know if the tape recording and the murder are one and the same. We gotta establish who had the motive who had the opportunity to knock off Carlisle? The killer had to know the house. Could it have been the man in the dark glasses and scarf? Who? He was in this room a moment before I was shot. Oh, it must have slipped my mind. Do you think it was someone else playing along with another joke? Let me go on with my deducing. Please do, Chandler. I have faith in you. Remember these two key words. Motive and opportunity. Chandler, for goodness sakes. What's that? It's a telephone. There's no telephone on Turkey Island. It's coming from over here, the desk. There's no phone on the desk. Try the draw. Ravenswood Manor. Who is Scarlet? What did they say? I'd rather not repeat what I heard. The language was true. An obscene phone call at this hour? Remember these key words, motive and opportunity? Let me handle this. In the detective game, either a firecracker <laughs> or a fizzle. This is Chandler Marlowe speaking, you pinhead. I got ways of tracing phone calls. When I find out who this is, I'm gonna rearrange your face. You're gonna be breathing through your navel, you son of a... What? Oh, really? Oh, you think you're mad enough? You just remember my name, Buster Chandler Marlowe. 
Mr. Marlowe, would you mind explaining? Well, uh, eh. I'll follow the gag. You wanted us to keep it up, didn't you? But the telephone rang. I've got a relay buzz in my pocket. Shall I answer it? Do shut up, you silly girl. Better tell it all, Chandler. Rita, what do you have to do with this? I'm Chandler's secretary. You? When Miss Maple advertised for a social secretary for one month, Chandler had me apply. I already have my invitation, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity for some laughs. Murder is no laughing matter. I kept needling Louie about the headless horseman until I had him thinking that it was Rita. But did the jockey in? Interesting theory. But Louis Fed is not by heart box undoubtedly contains Bodak that silent Scarline. Hey! Behold, murder weapon. What's in there? A head! A head? A head of cabbage. Cabbage? I called you a fool before, and that's what you all part of the gag? <laughs> Head of cabbage is food for thought. Everything seems to be falling into place. You forgot one thing, Miss Hayes. Father White, he didn't confess to any indiscretions. Not only that, he knows this house inside and out. Why do you say that? Because I saw you coming out of the bookcase. There's a secret passageway back there. Secret passageway? Now we're getting somewhere. Chandler is quite right. In detection, we must always look for the unexpected. With the naked eye, we cannot see the invisible snakes that exist in every glass of water. What's he going on about? The crocodiles that swim in every spoonful of soup. Soup? Or the invisible dolphins that roam and play in every droplet of milk. What are you getting at? That's the kind of stuff he puts in his books. Nobody can understand it. I merely wish to point out that we must implore a microscope of the mind when we investigate. You say so. I suppose there's no point in continuing the deception. Truth of the matter is, I'm not Father White. Impossible! Who are you? A strolling minstrel, you might say. I'm an actor! I never invite actors! Well, they're doing a new radio series on Father White. I persuaded the real invitee to allow me to take his place, to test my impersonation, to get inside the mind of Father White, to act and react as only he That's would. That's quite enough of that drivel. Invisible crocodiles, indeed. Oh, but the secret passageway. It's not a secret passageway. The original owner had a flair for eccentric architecture. It leads up from the wine cellar. Is that where the other door is? Well, didn't you know? Ravenswood Manor is not my home. I merely rented it for a few weeks for the purpose of this weekend house party. Listen! The helicopter! Maybe this time it is the police. <laughs> Can you see it? Who died? Is it the police? I think it's on the north side of the island. We can signal with the flare. Through the kitchen, not that way. See, we the helicopter may be our last chance. We must get its attention. Wait, look! It's him! It's the man I was telling you about. Good Lord, Rick Carlisle. Impossible! You're dead! Never saw anyone dead up. I too thought of a little joke that would be amusing. Instead of one Rick Carlisle, there would be two. Two? Who? Rick's twin brother. He's the one down in the wine cellar. I was going to confuse everyone, be in two places at the same time. But the killer got to me first and finished me off. You mean your brother, don't you? That's right. Only he hadn't realized he had made a mistake. So I decided to stay out of sight and learn what I could. What did you learn? Nothing. Oh, fuck. God. I'll take it from here. You. You are the murderer. How can anyone be so consistently wrong? 
You'll take what from here? Why, the investigation. I saw Carlisle talking to his brother in town. Carlisle's twin was a con artist. If he was coming here, he had plans to rob. Flimsy owes me a favor or two, so he was no problem. My brother was no good, that's right. He did seem to agree rather quickly. I should have known. The pickings would be good. Some jewels, some wallets, who knows what else? If you're not Peter Flimsy, who are you? Pharaoh Lick. Top police detective on the Frisco Force. That's San Francisco. Can't you get your foot out of that waste basket? Trying. Ah. Everything has been explained satisfactorily. Uh, not quite, Miss Maple. It was all a charming and delightful exercise in now you see it, now you don't. Who killed the man in the wine cellar? Let me answer that. Who are you, miss? Mabel! Mabel? Oh, wait! You! You are the murderer! Louis, you say that one more time, I'll murder you. I mean business. I killed the wrong man, but I won't ma make that mistake a second time. No one leave this room. Where is the real Habersham? Probably in Canada by now. I give her $200 to take her place. I won't be able to give a very good report to the parole people. He made a fool of me. No one walks out on Mabel Dupre. I've killed one man already. That does another one matter. Richie's going to shoot! <laughs> What a woman! You're a wonder! The police helicopter is flying around to see if I need assistance. It's gonna have an unexpected passenger. I'm taking you in. Look! It's done! <laughs> the storm has passed. The boat from the mainland will be here soon. Come along, Mabel. You've got a date with the jury. I won't have anything to worry about. Not if there are 12 men on that jury. I don't want to stay in this place another minute. Let's get our luggage and get out of here. I didn't bring any luggage. Maybe I could hitch a ride with Pharaoh Link. He's my kind of man. I d What? You... How do you like that? Shouldn't know better than to trust a dame. Rita, see if you can get something on the radio besides static. I do hope they send someone for the gentleman in the wine cellar. I'm sure they will. <sighs> what a night. What a night. Well, you know what this program might turn the music to bring you a special bulletin. A dangerous murderer has escaped from the Marin County Institute. Turn it off, Rita. We don't want to go through that again. I'd like to thank you all for coming. You've been a great audience. I'm sure we will not have another one like you. You're great. Thank you very much. <laughs>